Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is from NVIDIA. We have Will Ramey. He is the Senior Product Manager for GPU Computing at the company. So, Will, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Rich. So, so thanks for coming on. Well, you know, we're here today to talk about CUDA 5. It's out. It's, uh, it's available for, for, for download for developers. And I thought we could just go through your talk about what's all in CUDA 5 and uh, do some Q&A at the end. That sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. I'm happy to share with you what's new in CUDA 5. Great. So uh, CUDA 5 is the fifth generation release of the CUDA parallel programming platform and uh, programming model. And in this release, as with every release, there's uh, you know a, a lot of new features. But there are four that we're really, really excited about and want to highlight and share with you today. Um, the first is uh, dynamic parallelism, which we've talked about earlier uh, at the GPU technology conference this year. Uh, but we did that in the context of talking about the new hardware architecture, the new Kepler GPU computing architecture. Uh, and uh, so we want to talk with you a little bit about that from the software programming perspective today. Uh, and then there's also uh, a new way of using libraries and sharing code on the GPU, and uh, a few more features that we'll, we'll talk about as we go. Uh, so let's dive right in and take a look at it. Dynamic parallelism, uh, as you have probably learned, is a way that GPU code, so code that's already running on the GPU, can now create new work for the GPU. So one thread running on the GPU, one of, say, 10,000 threads running on the GPU, or any of the threads running on GPU can now create a parallel workflow thread. Of, excuse me, a parallel workflow with another 10,000 or 15 or 20,000 threads, however many you need, uh, on that same GPU without having to return control to your CPU code. And the example that you see here on the screen is just showing that um, the way that developers can take advantage of this feature is really, really easy. In fact, CUDA programmers don't need to learn anything new because it uses exactly the same programming model, exactly the same syntax uh, to launch work on the GPU from the GPU as they already know how to do when they launch work on the GPU from the CPU. So really, really powerful and very easy to use enhancement to the CUDA programming model. Uh, and the example that you see there on the right is one of a, um, uh, an adaptive mesh simulation for computational fluid dynamics. And this is uh, just one use case that shows how you can, um, for example, take each square in this uh, image and do the, all the computation associated with that square on one core of the GPU. And so the squares that don't have very much data in them to, to compute can be much larger. And those that have lots of information when they need to do more computation because there's more data there can be much smaller and therefore you can distribute the workload across the GPU very efficiently and get much higher performance in a very, very easy way. Another new feature, a new technology that we're introducing with this release and, and goes hand in hand with dynamic parallelism in some cases is GPU callable libraries. Now we've had libraries that include GPU acceleration for several years now, a complete BLOS library, uh, an FFT library, a sparse matrix operations library, uh, etc. And these are all available for free in the CUDA toolkit. What's new in this release of CUDA 5 is a GPU callable version of the CUDA BLOS library, which means you now have direct access to all of the BLOS features from inside your GPU code. Whereas before, you were only able to call the BLOS library from inside your CPU code. Now you can also take advantage of all of that functionality of the CUDA BLOS library inside your GPU code. And the CUDA BLOS library for the, the GPU callable version takes advantage of dynamic parallelism. So you could have each thread in your CUDA kernel make a call into the CUDA BLOS library, and then the CUDA BLOS library turns around and has access to all of the cores in the GPU for each thread that you are already running. So this is a tremendously powerful uh, programming model enhancement. Um, 
And we're also releasing all of the, the tools, the compiler and the linker um, necessary for you to create your own GPU callable libraries. And this is going to result in uh, an ecosystem of commercial and open source GPU callable libraries that developers can take advantage of in their own GPU code um, and uh, make it much easier and faster for developers to take advantage of pre-packaged, pre-optimized collections of uh, algorithms and, and routines for the GPU. Uh, the third major new improvement in the CUDA 5 release is that we have added support for RDMA to GPU Direct. Now, GPU Direct is our family of technologies that deliver very high throughput, very low latency communication capabilities with and between GPUs. And uh, we, we've had several um, releases with updates to uh, GPU Direct functionality in, in previous versions of the CUDA toolkit, but in CUDA 5, the new thing that we're adding is the ability to have uh, direct DMA access to GPU memory. And there are two really important use cases that this enables. Um, one is the example that you see here on the screen where you're in a, a clustered computing environment. You have, you know, hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of, of nodes, each one an individual computer, but all working together to solve some large scientific or engineering computation or, or simulation uh, application. And these nodes, each node in the cluster needs to communicate with each other, and they do that by transferring data from the memory of one system into the data of the other. Now, previous to CUDA 5, the most efficient way to get data from the memory of one GPU into the memory of another GPU was to, trans was to go through the CPU, through system memory, then back down through the PCIe to the network card, hop across the network, go up through the CPU into system memory, and then back down across PCIe up into uh, the second GPU's, the destination GPU's memory. That's kind of a lot of extra hops, especially if you're not doing anything to that data while it's on the CPU, going through the CPU and, and in system memory. And so what we've done in CUDA 5 is we've made it possible to get rid of all of those extra hops, and you can now communicate directly from uh, the memory in one GPU on one system to the memory in the GPU of a second system somewhere else on the network that connects all the nodes in your cluster. So that's one use case um, of implementing RDMA transfers between GPUs on different nodes of a cluster. The second use case is where you have some kind of sensor data that's coming in and you want to use the GPU to process that data. Now, whether that's image data coming in from a, a camera or a, a video source or whether that's a different kind of signal that you're getting, say, from you know, a, a weather sensor or something like that, that would also, before CUDA 5, have to go through the CPU up to system memory and then uh, down into the GPU's memory. But now with GPU Direct, the sensor can send its data directly into GPU memory and immediately begin um, working on it, either adding that input to the computation or the simulation that's being performed on the GPU. Uh, and in fact, we have uh, a couple uh, developers, one from GE uh, Intelligent Platforms that has an entire product line of GPU accelerated um, solutions that, that they're selling that's already added support to their sensors for, for this GPU Direct uh, technology, and they're seeing really good results. I'll, I'll share a little bit more with, about that with you in a few minutes. And then finally, um, you're probably familiar with our, uh, our Parallel Insight, or, or now it's named Insight Visual Studio Edition product. This is a, a series of uh, enhancements that NVIDIA has developed for Visual Studio, or developers, Windows developers who are using Visual Studio, uh, that allows them to um, create, debug, and optimize the performance of their GPU accelerated applications all within the convenient, familiar environment of Visual Studio. Um, and so what we've done in this release is we've created a brand new integrated development environment experience for Linux and Mac OS developers 
building on top of the Eclipse platform. So now everyone can have the um, kind of the experience, the power of GPU computing with the productivity of an integrated development environment like Eclipse. And um, you can see some of the screenshots here uh, showing the CUDA aware editor, the integrated debugging support that allows you to seamlessly step from your CPU code into your GPU code and back, and then also the, uh, all the functionality of the NVIDIA Visual Profiler integrated into a single development environment. And what we're finding is this is uh, significantly improving the productivity uh, for our developers so they can spend less time developing their code and more time running it and getting the, getting the results of their efforts. Uh, and then one last thing that I, I wanted to share with you is that um, we, uh, concurrent with CUDA 5, we're launching a new online resource center so developers can get all of the latest information uh, about developing for GPUs programming CUDA all in one place. And so this includes over 1,600 files with all the programming guides, tools, manu manuals, um, source code examples, all the API references that you would need. They're all cross-linked and optimized for search engines, um, integrated search functionality. Uh, and this is all available today at docs.nvidia.com, D-O-C-S dot nvidia.com. Uh, and so this is going to be a great resource uh, for all the developers who are, you know, just had a quick question and they wanted to get a quick answer. You can just put your search into Google and this should be one of the, one of the top hits that you get. We're also packaging this uh, complete information resource uh, and putting it inside the CUDA Toolkit installer so if you happen to be working someplace where you don't have internet access, all of this information will be available uh, installed in your local development environment as well. Um, I wanted to share with you some of the feedback that we've been receiving from developers using the pre-release versions of CUDA 5, updating their applications to take advantage of some of these these new features. Um, I don't need to, to read them out for you, but the thing that's really interesting to me is that um, not only the, the depth to which people have jumped in and started using the new features, but also the breadth of the application areas uh, where they're finding them useful. So we have you know, research biologists, we have uh, application engineers who are working on embedded sen sensors. Uh, again, this is the example I mentioned earlier of uh, GE Intelligent Platforms adding support for GPU Direct RMA, RDMA uh, into their, their custom sensors and seeing really good results. Um, and then there's, you know, even uh, PhD candidates working in the university research setting finding that their productivity is incredibly increased uh, using the new Insight Eclipse Edition development environment. Um, and so, uh, this is really the, the highlights of CUDA 5. Um, there are a ton more features that we're really happy are included in this release, and we'll be including more information about those in some of our upcoming webinars and developer education uh, events uh, in the coming weeks. So that's, that's CUDA 5 in a nutshell, and uh, thanks, for, thanks for listening. Do you have any questions? I, I sure do. Thank, thanks, thanks a lot for that, Will. So I guess the, the first question that comes to mind is, uh, do I have to have Kepler to take advantage of all these features, or which ones uh, apply to your big install base that's already out there? Ah, that is, that's a great question. So um, basically, everyone who is, is programming CUDA should upgrade to CUDA 5. The, the CUDA 5 allows you to create applications, GPU accelerated applications, for every CUDA GPU we've ever shipped. So hundreds of millions of GPUs install base. There are some new features that take advantage of uh, capabilities in the hardware that were, have only been introduced a little more recently. So let me, let me give you a quick overview of that. Sure. Um, for dynamic parallelism uh, that we talked about first, this is supported on our GK110 GPU architecture and later. So the first product that you can uh, use this on is the Tesla K20 GPU, and it will be included in all of our future GPU products 
based on the GK110 architecture or future architectures going forward. The GPU callable libraries support is available for all Fermi class GPUs and later, so the generation before Kepler and Kepler and future generations as well. GPU direct support for RDMA is supported on Kepler GPUs and later, so supported, supported starting with our uh, GK100 GPUs, there's a Kepler K10, and there's also Quadro and uh, versions of that. It's supported on the professional products, uh, of course, because that's where this kind of really high throughput, really low latency, tight integration with third-party uh, PCIe devices is needed most. Um, and it will be supported in future products as well. Uh, and then, of course, the new Insight Eclipse Edition development environment is supported for all GPUs. This is, this is the development environment that we now recommend for Mac OS and Linux developers uh, to take advantage of all of the all of the tools in a, in a single integrated development environment. Well, terrific. So uh, I wanted to ask you about the docs uh, and what what was the genesis of that? What that that you wanted to put that all in one place and actually wrap it into the the binary of uh, uh, what were you getting comments that it was hard to find info or through the through the uh, the boards or, or what? How did that get going? Sure. Yeah. So one of the one of the things that I like most about my job is I have the opportunity to go out and talk with a lot of our developers and learn about um, you know what are they doing, how are they applying GPU computing technology in their field of research, their field of science, their their or their uh, you know commercial applications. And in the early days of CUDA, one of the things that I would hear consistently is, "Gosh, I wish you had a little more documentation on this or a little more documentation on that." And so I would always go back and we'd we work on improving the documentation and building more documents. And now there's, I think it's you know, 120, 130 page programming guide and another 100 pages or so of best practices and you know, a couple dozen additional documents addressing specific needs that developers uh, told us they needed. And so now we have this large collection of individual PDF files and text files and HTML files and the challenge became not that the documentation didn't exist, but how do I find it quickly? How do I share it with my friend who's asking me a question about this? How do I answer someone's question and point them to the right place in the documentation quickly? And so we went from this, uh, in the early days, not having enough documentation to suddenly in the, in the CUDA 4 release time frame, having so much documentation that people were a little bit overwhelmed. And now with CUDA 5, what we've done is we've brought it all together into one integrated, um, resource center, you can very quickly find what you need and very quickly share or reference it uh, for other people to help them as well. Okay, well, well, I guess kind of a wrap-up question here. I see the, the URL at the bottom. Is it just a matter of going there and downloading it? Do I have to join something? Do I have to buy something? How does it work? Uh, so the CUDA toolkit, as always, and everything that we've talked about today is available completely free of charge. Uh, you just go to nvidia.com slash getcuda. That will always take you to the latest release. Uh, and there will be links there as well to the documentation system and, and other information that you may find uh, useful in developing for GPUs. Well, terrific. Well, Will, I'd like to thank you once again for coming on the show today. Great. Thanks, Rich. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.